Wow. I'm supposed to go after that. <laughs> like Brian said, this event does not just happen, and I just want to take a moment to thank one of our major sponsors, Solar Universe, in the back. What do, what do conservatives have in common with a solar company? We both want to save your bottom line. At Solar Universe, Del Bacaro. Tom is the vice chairman of the California Republican Party, and he is currently running for the CRP chair. He's the publisher of politicalvanguard.com. He's the author of The New Conservative Paradigm, and of course, a frequent talk radio and television commentator. I'm sure you've all heard him before. Tom is heard by millions of conservative activists on the radio, TV, and in person each year. He is uniquely positioned to hear the pulse of politics all the way from the grassroots, that's you, to presidential candidates and legislators in between. And when I asked Tom if there was anything he wanted me to make sure that you knew about him, he wanted me to make sure that you know that his, he considers his greatest achievement in life to be the fact that his daughter is now serving our country in the United States Air Force. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Debacaro. How are you today? How are you today? Are you ready to send Pelosi packing? We're tired. All right, I'm in the right place. You know, uh, I wanted just to give you a, a quick little history nugget because I know Brian, Brian likes to talk about that. But before we get to those kind of things, let's give it up for Brian Sussman. Come on! And where is Dr. B? Is he around? Give it up for Dr. B, Bridget Nelson, for putting this all together. The great thing about America is that you can come from anywhere, do anything, be anything. She's not just a great doctor, but she's an inspiration to all of us. Let's give it up for Dr. B. So I, I just wanted to give you a, a little historical perspective. How many people here like Obamacare? Yeah, good. Let's have a boo. So, as you know, this week in Florida, the, the lawsuit of 20 states is progressing, right? Yeah. Just to give you a little perspective about how things have changed, where the states have politely asked the Supreme Court to sue, that if they can sue the federal government. Back in 1787, Jefferson wrote the uh, Kentucky Resolutions, which said that if the state thought the federal government went too far, the state could just ignore what the federal government did. And let me tell you how, how serious some states about, were about this kind of thing. In the 18, early 1800s, Georgia was sued by someone in South Carolina. And the Supreme Court Justice was hearing the case, and Georgia said to the Supreme Court Justice, you have no right to hear this. We disagree with you. We're not showing up for the lawsuit. South Carolina guy has no rights. Listening to Jefferson, they wanted to nullify the federal action. The Supreme Court said, yes, we do. Heard the lawsuit, passed the judgment. And just to tell you how different things are, Georgia didn't sue and ask it to be changed. Georgia passed the law, outlawing the judgment, and within that law was the death penalty for anyone who came to Georgia to enforce the federal law. That, my friends, is the difference between now and today. I'm here today to talk to you on behalf of two people which you are going to hear standing beside me. Two friends of mine who stand for true limited government and true conservatism. But I want you to know it's not enough for us to sit here anymore just knowing that we should have limited government, just knowing that lower taxes is correct, or living through the nightmare of Obamacare and the rest. 
We, as conservatives, people who believe in limited government, must do a better job at winning elections. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and there are some offices that are absolutely critical to this process. Now let me tell you, throughout all of history, people tend towards government if they fear the private sector or feel insecure about their safety. People go away from government in elections where government is perceived as the problem. So for instance, in 1980 when Reagan ran and said that government is not the solution, but government is the problem, we moved away from government. During Prop 13, when government was moving people out of the houses, people moved away from government. During the recall, when we talked about the illegal tripling of the car tax, people moved away from government, got a tax cut, even though there was a $20 billion deficit. On the other side of the equation, when the elections are about what government can do, we lose. Freedom loses. So last in 2008, it was about what government was going to do. Even when John McCain said he wanted to buy up the bad mortgages, that's about what government can do, and that is why we lose elections. No better example of that is the Great Depression when FDR demonized the public private sector and people moved to the public sector. So, what I'm telling you is that it's very simple. Elections are won when they are fought about freedom. Freedom loses when they are fought about what government can do. Here in California, there can be no greater example of that. And there is a critical election this time in this state where we are either going to go off the cliff with Jerry Brown and the rest, or we're going to decide to fight for freedom in a new way. And there are two offices critical to this process. They are the Treasurer's Office and the Controller's Office. Now look, who here thinks that there's no waste in government? Of course you know that there's waste in government. It is out of control. But you don't even have an inkling of how bad it is. Because the treasurer's office and the controller's office are run by the Democrats and their union friends. And they don't expose the truth. This time around in this election, we have two people that will expose the truth. Running for treasurer is State Senator Mimi Walters behind me on the right there. And the slightly taller version is State Senator Tony Strickland, true conservative running for controller. If we have those offices, we will understand the truth about waste and abuse in government. And I will just give you one small example. Each of you pays a parcel tax to pay for education. Raise your hand if you pay about $100, $150 a year, right? Do you know that every year in California, the state government wastes on school roof repair, roofs, between $30 million and $125 million a year? And they want you to pay an extra what? $100. Bucks. Why don't you know that? Why did the Chronicle break that instead of the controller or the treasurer? Because Union Democrats have it. We need to make that change. So, I'm going to introduce to you Tony Strickland. You'll get a chance to hear from Mimi Walters. We can win elections in America if we have the controller's office, because if forever we have that office, the Democrats will never be able to say we deserve more money because we will expose once and for all billions in waste and put them on the defensive instead of freedom in your taxes.